Does your car overheat and the component of your cooling system constantly fail? Well, if that's the case, listen up, because this video might be for you. Hey, 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 how's it going? Do it yourself first. Today, we're gonna go over a commonly overlooked part of your cooling system. That if it's not working properly, can cause all sorts of overheating issues, damage to your cooling system components, head gasket problems, etc. Which is none other than your cooling system pressure regulator. This guy right here. Now I know what you're gonna say. You're gonna say, hey, that's a radiator cap, dummy. Now uh, this is technically a cap, but it's also a pressure regulator, AKA a pressure release valve for your cooling system. And this is made up of not just one, but two valves that I'll show you later in this video. All right, so how does this work? So basically by having this radiator cap or pressure regulator valve as part of your cooling system on your radiator, you raise the boiling point of the coolant that's inside your cooling system. So as the engine warms up and heats up, it will heat up the coolant. As the coolant heats up, uh, you know, the coolant molecules will want to expand. And if there's no pressure inside the system, the boiling point is going to be a lot lower. But if you have this radiator cap regulating the pressure that's inside the system to about, you know, usually 14 to 18 PSI, by doing that and having pressure in there, you raise the boiling point of the coolant because, you know, as the coolant molecules or let's say the water molecules are under more pressure, more pressure, they can't, as they heat up, they can't expand as easily and boil off and, you know, turn into vapor. And that's what these numbers on the caps are about. So you, on this one, you can see it's 13 pounds. And other times you get it in bar, bar being a metric unit of pressure. Now 1.1 bar roughly equals 16 PSI, 1.3 roughly equals 18 PSI, and there's obviously conversion tables you can find online as well. All right, now onto these and how exactly the two valves that are inside here regulate the pressure inside the cooling system. All right, so as the coolant expands inside your cooling system, it needs some place to go. Otherwise, it will break something eventually. So when the pressure again reaches a predetermined amount, which let's say 13 PSI, the spring-loaded valve that you can hopefully see, and you can see it, I can move it up and down, it will simply move up. And once this moves up and opens up, coolant will flow from your radiator through this hole, through this hose, to your coolant overflow tank. Reducing the overall pressure inside your cooling system, protecting other components that make up the cooling system, but also regulating your engine's running temperature. All right, so that's how the first valve works and regulates the pressure inside your cooling system. Now the second valve inside here comes into play when the engine is cool cooling down and therefore the coolant is cooling down and contracting instead of expanding during the heat up process. Now as it contracts, it basically uh, pulls a vacuum on the system and that's when the second valve that I'm gonna show you comes into play. This guy right here, this is also spring loaded and as you can see, it can open and close. You might be able to see it better on this aftermarket one. It's this guy right here and if I pull on this, there, you can see it open and close. So yeah, during the cool down process, this valve will open up, allowing for the pathway of coolant going back from your coolant overflow tank through this tube, through that hole, and through the center of these two valves back into the, your cooling system. And that's why it's important whenever you change coolant or something in your cooling system, you make sure you have enough coolant inside your overflow tank, because if it's empty during the cool down process, it's just gonna simply suck in air and put that into your cooling system, that's gonna cause all sorts of issues. All right, next let's talk about symptoms of a bad radiator cap. So if this primary valve, for example, is stuck and it's not opening at the correct pressure, you're obviously gonna build up too much pressure inside your cooling system. When you build up too much pressure, you're gonna start uh, having leaks, you know, whether it's a pinhole leak on a radiator hose or maybe a radiator hose that's got a tear right where the clamps are, or a radiator hose that first has a, you know, starts expanding in just one area. Those are all symptoms of too much pressure inside your cooling system. You can obviously have leaks in other areas, maybe a gasket or a seal, uh, maybe the radiator itself could have a leak. These are all symptoms of too much pressure inside your cooling system and the main culprit is usually, a lot of times I should say, is this uh, radiator cap. Now another side of a bad radiator cap or pressure regulator, as I like to say, is an overflowing coolant reservoir. So yeah, again, in that case, that's a sign of a bad or a weak primary valve here. This is, let's say, this, this cap is designed for 13 PSI. So this valve is opening at, let's say, 5 PSI. It's just gotten weak over time, whatever. That's obviously gonna allow for too much coolant to flow through this, this tube here 
to the, your uh, coolant reservoir and overflow it. And this one actually is where people make a lot of mistake when they try to diagnose a problem with the car. You know, they come, they, you know, a lot of times when this is weak and not keeping enough pressure inside your cooling system, your temperature gauge is obviously going to go up. You know, the, the owner is going to come out, look at inside the, the engine compartment. They're going to see the, the tank overflowing. Temperature has gone up. They imagine the worst. They think combustion gases are getting into the cooling system, creating too much pressure, pushing the coolant uh, uh, past the limit of the overflow tank and that's you know they go down a path that involves you know head gasket all sorts of things where the whole while it was just simply your your cap or this pressure regulator has gotten weak. Now another symptom that's not super common but does happen and involves the second valve inside your radiator cap as I like to call it is uh, collapsed hoses you know you go park your car you come the next day you open the hood and you see this upper radiator hose it's all collapsed you know on itself same thing for that one and you start to wonder and if that's the case that's the secondary valve here not opening up and allowing coolant to flow back from the your uh, coolant reservoir back into your cooling system and if, if this is stuck closed and not allowing for that you know the vacuum that develops inside your cooling system is just gonna you know collapse the hoses and whatnot now something else that can obviously cause issues for your cooling system is not necessarily a bad radiator cap but having the wrong radiator cap on your cooling system which is I believe is what's happened here. So again this cap that I took off this car is rated at 13 psi but the spec for the cooling system and the cap on this 9200 Prelude asks for a 14 to 18 psi radiator cap or pressure regulator as I like to call it again. Now this is 13 psi so obviously you're not gonna severely overheat but the running temperature of the engine and therefore all the components inside your uh, cooling system is going to be a little bit higher than what it's supposed to be. Which obviously makes you wonder whether that had anything to do with this radiator corroding like this and obviously starting to leak in multiple places up top. So yeah we're going to replace not only the radiator but also this cat with the 1.1 bar which again is 16 psi. When you have coolant leaks or overheating issues uh, it's not always the cap or the pressure regulator but since this is fairly easy to test you obviously want to take it out when the engine is cool and then uh, you know inspect it. So not only inspect the valves make sure they move freely but also take a look at these gaskets as you can see this uh, upper one is cracked in multiple places this is really really old but what's even worse is that this lower lower gasket is missing uh, some rubber in some area so this could cause a leak or it could suck in air during the cool down process as well. Now obviously a visual inspection like this is not definitive. It can't tell you whether this valve will open up at the correct PSI. In order to be able to uh, be sure whether you have a correct or a good valve or, or a radiator cap, you'll need a cooling system pressure tester with a radiator cap adapter. Now if you want to see how that works and how we can use that to find leaks inside your cooling system, I suggest you subscribe and hit that bell notification. And also check out my other videos in the meantime. There'll be links on the screen right here. You can also click and watch any of my videos in the suggestion box. That will work as well. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.